Hello, people. I don't know why I decided literally just now in this moment to make a video, but um, I don't even know if I'm gonna post this. I just decided randomly to make a video because I'm doing my makeup and I really never do that ever because it takes forever, it's a lot of effort, and I would rather just like roll out of bed and look kinda ugly, so. But I'm doing my makeup today because I feel like I should. And doing my makeup is really boring and I'm really bad at it and I kinda hate it, so I figured I would make a video and just talk while I do it. Kinda like the one video I made last year that strangely got a lot of views because, well, you know, I was talking about embarrassing stories and like one of my embarrassing stories that I talked about was me pissing my pants on my first date, which, wasn't clickbait and actually got a lot of views, so. I'm not really trying to get a lot of views. I'm just bored. And I, you know, I figured I would sit and do makeup and talk. So just talk about my life and what's been going on as if anybody cares. Uh, specifically, I figured I would give an update about like my EMDR therapy because I made a couple of videos about that a few months ago and I said that I would keep making videos about it, but I just never did because the whole process turned out to be a lot more tedious and like drawn out than I expected because it turns out that whenever you reprocess all of your traumatic memories that you've been holding on to for years, it takes a long time before you get to a place where you feel okay. So that's why I haven't really done another video on it because it was just taking a long time and I really didn't know what to say because I was just doing the same things that I was doing in those first couple videos. But I have finally moved on from that one memory that I started with, which was my sexual assault from a few years ago. And I'm moving on to other things now. So I guess I thought I would do like a brief update on that. I don't know if I'm gonna post this. All of my makeup products are vegan, especially ones that I've bought in the last year or two are vegan. I'm not not good at makeup. <laughs> I don't do it right and I probably should be buying products more often because makeup expires, but I don't. So a lot of my makeup is probably expired, but I use it anyway. Don't freaking, don't judge me, okay? I only do makeup in a way that makes me look decent. It doesn't mean that I'm doing it right. Pretty much I'm using the same things that I used in my video last year. <laughs> Because I do makeup like once every couple months, maybe, and I never buy new makeup pretty much until I run out like three years after I buy something because I'm cheap and broke and I don't care that I'm applying expired product to my face. It hasn't given me an allergic reaction or anything, so why should I spend the money to buy new stuff? Right. Getting to the updates on therapy. All right, so the last video I made about this was like in May, April, something like that. I don't even know. My memory sucks so bad. <gasps> memory loss is a huge part of PTSD. I just forget everything now. I forget little things and big things and it just kind of ruins my life in little ways. <laughs> I don't even remember exactly what I talked about in those videos. I just know that I made them and that they were about my therapy. Anyway, I'm still in EMDR therapy and it took me until like late July, I wanna say, for me to get to a point with the rape memory. Um, what was I saying? Oh my God, oh my God, what was I saying? It's fine, just start over. It's fine. There was something this week where, oh yes, I was in the middle of a task. I got up to do something and when I got up, I forgot like what I got up to do. That's how bad my memory is. So it took me from probably like March to late July, early August to get my rape memory to a point where my mental disturbance level was at like a one on a scale of one to 10 of like distress and my bodily disturbance level to about a one or a zero on a scale of one to 10. In EMDR, you measure your progress on processing a memory based on two things, which is your mental anxiety disturbance level and your physical anxiety disturbance level because both go hand in hand. And people think that anxiety and mental illness is just in your head and it doesn't affect you physically. So wrong. It can affect you physically in literally so, so many ways. At the beginning and end of every therapy session, she would ask me what your bodily and mental disturbance level on a scale of one to 10 or whatever. And I would 
tell her what it was. And usually with that memory specifically, I felt a lot of physical tension and stress in my legs. Uh, and at first I didn't know why, but it was just all centered like in my legs um, for whatever reason when I was doing EMDR. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and watch my other videos where I explain everything about how EMDR works um, because I'm not gonna re-explain it. I didn't know why all of the tension was centered in my legs, but I realized several months later, it was because when my initial assault happened, that is where my abuser started touching me and he started assaulting me was my legs and went from there. And most of my memories that I go through in EMDR, my bodily tension is centered in my legs. And it's super weird. Most people carry their stress in like their shoulders and their chest. Those are very common places. I finally, after like four months, four or five months, I finally got that memory down to mental and physical distress level of zero to one for both, which was a huge, huge thing for me because I've been suffering with this for years now. And it's just been a really long journey of me suffering from the same thing, going through stages of denial and going through stages where I completely forgot that that happened. And then the minute it would hit me, I would just like grieve it all over again. Just, I, I've gone through so many like different phases and like emotions with that memory. The fact that the psychotherapy worked so well that I'm not really affected by that anymore. Or if I am, it's very rare where I'll have panic attacks over it. Since I finished that memory, <gasps> oh god <laughs> anyway <laughs> what was i saying since I've finished that memory in therapy, I have panicked over it only a few times, which is a huge deal for me compared to how it has affected me the past like three years now. So yeah, it's a huge deal for me that I'm like somewhat okay when I'm you know, thinking about it or talking about it with people or writing about it. It's so liberating. I felt a lot more free since I've gotten that under control, but there are so many things that I still have to do in therapy. Like like, I still have to go over all of my triggers associated to my sexual assault. I still have to go through all of my triggers associated to the guy that did it. I still have a lot of work to do in therapy, pretty much. Um, so even though I got the main memory out of the way since, you know, the last videos I made, it's still, I still have a lot, a lot of work to do, which is stressful. But I know that if I can endure doing really, really intense psychotherapy and revisiting that memory, memory over and over and over and over again for months, then I could do anything else. Ah! Since I finished that memory, I have gone over like two other memories since then, both relating to the guy and to the sexual assault. So therapy has made me realize that I have a lot more triggers and like traumatic memories associated to that whole event than I thought. I did. I just never realized until I sat down with someone and they were like making me think of all the things that caused me to stress. Um, and one of them is going to church, specifically a Catholic mass, because the guy that did it to me is Catholic, which I feel like is not super surprising considering all the Catholic church's scandals. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Can't say it thing on this mirror. So I, I have a really hard time going to church and Catholic churches in general. A lot of people know that I was rebaptized into a non-denominational church about a year ago now. And now that I look back, it's a great memory and it was a huge step in my life that I took and I, I don't regret it. I realize now that I did that because I was trying to run away and attach myself from Catholicism because of how much distress it caused me. Even though I do love the church, I love its traditions and teachings and I think it's very beautiful. I do love the idea of it and aspects of it, but I hate it <laughs> because it's associated to him. And I hate that when I go to mass, a lot of times he's there in the congregation and it makes me feel really unsafe and really like, I just hate everyone there because it makes me think, imagine how many more hidden rapists and predators are in this congregation with me, speaking about how much they love God and how they rebuke sin and stuff like that. Like I, I every time I go to church, I think about like, I am surrounded by people like him and that's it. And I hate the fact 
that I go to church and the mass has the same prayers that we say every single time and things that everybody chants together every single mass and I, I hate going there and saying those things knowing that he's saying them with me and he's a bad person. I hate that he is using Catholicism as like a blanket to cover up the way he actually is. I hate that. And so because of that, I've hated Catholicism for years now. I never wanted to be associated with it again, which is I think now the main reason why I got rebaptized last year into a non-denominational church because I just, I hated all of it. Oh my God. <laughs> Okay, I do my eyebrows totally wrong, okay? Don't even, don't even say anything. Just don't, because I already know. <sighs> And this pencil is like probably 10 years old, but it's the only pencil that doesn't irritate my skin and it's also the same color as my eyebrow. So anyway, the next memory I did after the initial assault memory was just going over all of my memories with him when I went to church and all the memories I have after our relationship when I went to church and he was there staring at me and making me feel unsafe and walking by him in church and feeling like I was about to die because of the panic and fear that I felt because of him. Even if he wasn't touching me or talking to me or whatever. I went over all of those things and I went over memories in a specific church that me and my fiance Chris really like to go to. It's a beautiful church, it's a cathedral. Me and my fiance want to get married in that church and I can't get married there if it is associated with such horrible memories and associated with such a horrible person. So that's the thing I went over next and it took maybe like another month or two to get to the point where you know my physical and mental distress levels were maybe like anywhere from a two to a four so I was able to go to church and not feel like I was gonna faint and not feel like I was running a marathon because of how fast my heart was going even though I was standing still because he's there in the choir behind me. I actually just moved on from that memory like a week or two ago. I feel okay enough to go to church now. As a whole, I feel a lot better about going there. The last time I went there actually, it was after mass and me and my fiance Chris were in the car driving out of the parking lot. We saw my abuser walk right by the car and he looked at us and then immediately looked away because he knew who we were. I just couldn't help myself. I just waved at him. <laughs> I couldn't help it, he was just right there. I spent so many years being intimidated by him. I just had to make him feel uncomfortable, so I did. I waved at him and he looked at me really quick, saw me waving, turned red, and like started running. <laughs> so funny. I can't do that anymore because I don't want him to use that as like, oh, she's harassing me and like trying to sue me or something. I don't want to give him anything that he could use against me potentially because I kicked him out of my college through Title IX and he's been trying to get back at me ever since. So I don't want to give him anything to work with even though he doesn't have evidence of anything. So now I am working on pretty much all the memories of me in his car and like seeing his car around town and stuff like that which sounds really stupid every time i see his car around town which is quite frequently i am like instantly triggered and flashbacks come back immediately just stuff that happened but i have forgotten come back immediately i usually have to stare at his car every time i see it until i make sure that i know that it's his car i don't know why and even when i see a car that looks like his car but it isn't i have to like inspect it from all angles to make sure it's not his car and it makes me fixate on it until i know that it that i'm not in danger i feel so stupid talking about it a lot of things happen in our relationship that are associated with his car and his type of car i don't i don't <laughs> anyway, I'm doing that memory right now and I just started on that like maybe like last week or something I don't even know what I need to do after that. The only thing I can really think of that I need to do after that is Just all my memories and triggers with the choir I was in in my college because that's how I met him and that's where everything happened and after the relationship ended I was constantly in his presence for years being afraid and feeling like I was going to die from the panic that he caused me. That's really like my next thing that I'm going to be doing in EMDR, but after that I don't know. But I can say that EMDR has helped me a lot. When I first started out, I was really skeptical. I was like, this sounds like bogus to me. This doesn't sound like it will do anything, but it has. I'm just so grateful 
that I have the opportunity to receive therapy like this because a lot of people suffer for years without getting help because they just can't. They don't have the money. They don't know where to go. I'm so grateful that I have the opportunity to just go over all this stuff even though it's so hard and I'm so thankful that I have the opportunity to heal in this way. Healing takes a long time. I feel like I've always known that but I didn't really, really know until I started working towards healing. Sometimes healing isn't always uphill. Sometimes you feel like you're going backwards and you're just not getting better, but that is still healing. Healing is really hard. It takes a combination of failure and success to heal. I highly recommend this kind of therapy for anyone who has post-traumatic stress about anything. It's so incredibly helpful and healing. It's really, really hard. I think it's so necessary for people like me. Yeah. God, my eyebrows are always terrible. My eyebrows literally always look bad whether there is makeup on them or not. This video is being created for you, for people like you, so that you can cringe and continue talking about people like me who are so bad at makeup. <laughs> I only know how to do one type of makeup look on my face. It's foundation, powder, eyebrows, the same exact eyeshadow look every time. And then mascara. No blush, no highlighter, because I don't care. This is the only lipstick I have. I've had it for like years. <gasps> no, 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 no. Okay, I'm gonna put it back in a little bit. Now I need to do something with my hair and pick out an outfit, but I'm not gonna do any of that on camera because I've been talking for 47 minutes and eight seconds. I don't even know if I'm gonna post this, but if I do, thanks for watching and cringing at my makeup skills and listening to me babble for the hundredth time about things that bother me. Bye. <laughs>